Greetings and welcome back to room 303 and AP English. And we turn now in Roberts to page 753. We're going to look for a few moments at John Maysfield's Cargoes. This is an interesting poem. Maysfield is a quite remarkable uh, uh, poet, British English poet. Um, this poem from uh, 1902, and the fact that he comes from 1902 will be significant. We're also just to remind now in Roberts chapter 14, the focus here in our poetic study will be on imagery and uh, the way in which the poem is, in, go, is going to be linked to the senses. Let's talk a little bit about Maysfield. He is born in 1878 and dies in 1967. He is, a, as we said, an English poet and writer. He was poet laureate from 1930 to 1967, and he did win the Shakespeare Prize. Now, this poem, Cargos, is a compelling poem for a number of reasons. You'll notice at the bottom of 753 that there's a number of footnotes that are provided because there's some language we're going to have to identify. And as well, we're going to have to pay attention to the biblical allusions, not I-L-L-U-S-I-O-N, uh, that is to say I make a, an elephant disappear, that's, a, that's what magicians do, that's an illusion, illusion, A-L-L-U-S-I-O-N, that is to say a reference to another literary text, in this case it's going to be the Bible. So let's go ahead now, let's turn to the poem, I have a professional reader for this poem, we'll enjoy the study reading of the poem at levels 2 and 3 in a moment, let's go to work with Cargoes by John Maysfield and Quinn Quirim of Nineveh from distant Ophir, rowing home to haven in sunny Palestine with a cargo of ivory and apes and peacocks, sandalwood, cedarwood, and sweet white wine. Stately Spanish galleon coming from the isthmus, dipping through the tropics by the palm green shores with a cargo of diamonds, emeralds, amethysts, Topazes and cinnamon, and gold moidores. Dirty British coaster with a salt cake smokestack, butting through the channel in the mad March days, with a cargo of tine coal, road rails, pig lead, firewood, ironware, and cheap tin trays. Now what makes this poem fascinating is its organization, its structure, as well as, of course, what's being said without being said. Right? Let's pay attention, first of all, at level one, to quite literally what happens. Notice, we have three different ships that will be carrying cargo. Notice, we will work chronologically, going way back in time to then now the present day as the poem is being published in 1902. We're going to ask some questions about what is being said in referencing the different cargoes of the different ships. Notice we'll begin, first of all, with the famous ancient warships, right? The Corpormine is this, as, the, as your uh, note here at the bottom will tell you, ancient warships, right, because of the five men who had to operate vertical row stations. In other words, these huge ships, ships of Nineveh, and here now rowing back home back to sunny Palestine with a cargo of ivory, apes, and peacocks. Notice again your, your references here, uh, your allusions, 1 Kings 10, 22, 2 Chronicles 9, 21. That is to say, we have references now to an ancient time when there was this like majestic kind of bringing things back from another place. So we already have that one. And then the first word of the second stanza will emphasize again this notion, stately Spanish galleon coming from the isthmus, dropping through the tropics by the palm green shores. And here the cargo is diamonds, and emeralds, topaz, cinnamon, uh, that is to say, uh, treasures. So in both of the first two stanzas, we have emphasizing the notion that the cargo that's being brought back is of tremendous value. And of course, there is a very much political reading of this poem. That is to say, the exploitation of another place being brought back home. Bringing us then to the first word of the third and final stanza, the word dirty. Dirty British coaster with a salt caked smokestack Budding, notice your verbs here, from rowing to dipping to now butting. Butting through the channel in the mad March days 
with a cargo. And now, what is it that it brings? Well, coal, road rails, pig lead, firewood, cheap tin trays, and then the poem will end. Now, we have said many times in 303 that one of the things we love about poetry, following Czesław Milos, the great Polish writer's treatise on poetry, he made that observation that one good poem can carry a whole wagon full of prose, and I think this is a classic exemplar of this. Macefield is clearly asking us, challenging us, to consider the idea that in some ways, and let's now jump to 2A, we are what we carry. Interesting idea. We are what we carry. We define ourselves as a civilization by what is transported, what is brought into our country, what is exported out of our country. And to that degree, we are as a culture what our ships, both literally and metaphorically, carry. Notice as well, this could be a critique of modern commercialized life. Notice the word cheap here. In other words, how everything has changed. How, if you will, by 1902, Maysville's going to make the argument that England, the great power, is no longer that great power. Instead, now bringing cheap items into its country. Of course, to be the poem, as we said, does uh, uh, provide us with all of these biblical allusions. But as well, I want to point out the lack of complete sentences. Notice only the verbals that were being used, like we were saying, rowing and dipping and budding. It's as if it's almost musing on the passing of a certain kind of time at 3A. Well, I want to mention uh, Auden's Musée de Arts and that notion of the delicate ship had somewhere to get to. Go back and take a look at LearnStrong.net and our view and our, and our study of that one. Of course, you, you can't hardly read a poem like this in 1902 without seeing the influence of, of Karl Marx. You can go and take a look at our lecture on Communist Manifesto. I want to think as well about Wordsworth's The World is Too Much With Us. Anything that has to do with Wordsworth that's in relationship to this poem will work. Because you'll remember Wordsworth said, the world is too much with us late and soon. Getting and spending, we lay waste our powers. Little we see in nature that's ours. We've given our hearts away, a sordid boot. That idea that somehow we've become corrupted as a culture because of all the things that we feel like we need. So that now our culture has become dirty and cheap. Finally, in 3B, an interesting question once you know this poem. What treasure does your ship carry? It's an interesting metaphoric question, right? In other words, what matters most to you? We've often asked this question in 303. Wherever it is that you live and where your possessions are, if you only had three minutes to go in and get out with a few items before everything else was destroyed, burned, or taken away, or whatever, what would those items be and why? And to what degree would the items that you would select be for you precious versus cheap? See, we normally think about, wow, if I've got to go back in there and find something that matters to me, I'm going to have to pick just a few items, and I don't have much time. What are those items and why? Well, Maysville making us think with cargoes. Thank you. I hope you'll go to find more of his poetry as well.